me go mute the new desk. A new desk? What? Oh, shoot, you do have a new desk. Okay. Let's hope for the best. Your desk needs muting. <laughs> My desk needs muting. There's yeah. a box. Um, there's a box right there full of, like, 12 iPhones <laughs> that are all, oh. like, plugged into USB. Oh. But they're... They're all in Lynn's account, though, so whenever, like, one of her reminders goes off or something, like, 8 p.m., uh, the whole box just goes off. Oh. <laughs> I thought you meant, like, you had some super smart, I don't know, HomeKit connected desk or something. It's oh, like, no. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, I guess we have a pre-show from the desk. We do, indeed. Hello and welcome once again to episode 127 of Code Completion. We are a group of iOS developers and educators hoping to share what we love most about development, Apple technology, and completing your code. My name is Dimitri and I'll be your host once again for this episode and I'm joined today by my fellow completionist, Spencer. Hey there. Boy, that is so much easier to say when you're not sick. Um, <laughs> nice. On the, on the topic of finally not being sick, uh, Swift has evolved yet again. Uh, with uh, a new proposal called Package Manager Support for Custom Macros. So I guess this is like one of those stepping stone uh, proposals. Um, like it's been obvious that this kind of stuff has been coming along and it needs a place to kind of happen. Uh, and so packages are the perfect place for that. Yeah, that's great. I mean, uh, we're, we've been talking about macros, I think, in one form or another for like I don't know, at least a few months. Um, so any actual progress uh, is good. So uh, this is an active review between, let's see, yesterday, uh, sorry, well, yesterday for us, April 3rd and April 17th. So, uh, and the implementation is already available behind uh, a pre-release tools version. So uh, it's it's already kind of in there. So that's pretty cool. And um, this step for macros to be sort of, just a normal thing in our toolkit. So that's super exciting. Yeah. And I think that's this is going to be a moment where Swift becomes a whole lot more useful for a whole lot more use cases, mm -hmm. uh, where up until now it just had a very narrow uh, kind of use case. So uh, that's that's going to be really nice for, for them to finally mature into a part of the language. Um, and uh, we might... Like I don't, I don't know if we'll start seeing this, uh, but we might actually be seeing this soon because something else got announced, uh, and that is WWDC, uh, WWDC twenty twenty three, yeah. uh, is right around the corner apparently. Yeah, pretty crazy. June fifth to the ninth, and I think what we talked about last time, WWDC ran around was our question of is this going to continue to be online or not or and they have an answer for us mostly online yeah so this time it's just there's that all day event on the first day on the 5th for developers and students so the the people that are in the swift student challenge and then uh, i don't know how many other developers it will be but it's not like an all week thing like it was in 2019 and before 2018 i can't remember mm -hmm. um so yeah we're i think just in the age of a completely or 99 percent 95 percent uh wwdc so that's interesting there's not much information here on apple's page um just kind of the usual stuff but they just mentioned that special event for the keynote in the state of the union and then you know meeting people and doing kind of just that that quick thing but other than that um i don't know i haven't read anything else about dub dub so i i wonder if so last year they kind of gave a tour of the developer center um that they mm. just opened up um i wonder if they're going to make more use out of it this year um for the folks that do uh show up in person um and i guess a nice thing is if you do want to show up in person there's no longer a ticket price attached to that um, this is now a free, you just have to pay the, the heavy tax of lodging in, uh, San Jose, um, yeah. <laughs> which is completely different. Uh, or I guess Cupertino now, uh, it's all kind of the same area. 
Um, but yeah, one thing to know, if you do want to go in person, uh, masks are optional this year. They're not mandatory anymore. So uh, use that to your discretion if it is something you can go toward to. Uh, I personally will not. Um, as some of you may know, I am expecting a child in like a week and a half. Uh, right. so this is not, not a good time for me to be traveling. Um, uh, but in the not too distant future, I hope to, to maybe go to one of these because I really enjoyed, uh, going to WWC, whether it had a ticket or not to meet people, um, and to socialize and, uh, breathe fresh air outside my home. No, I'm just kidding. I'm the last one. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's definitely been something I enjoyed doing in the past. Um, and I think this makes it easier, right? Because it's no longer... Uh, a full conference attached to that it's yeah. just like the first day is socializing and then the rest of it you can either uh spend time in a hotel room i guess to do uh one-on-ones with apple engineers um or you can wait later in the year to do that because they they are continuing that uh it seems and that has been much better because yeah. frankly like that one week is never enough uh to prepare no, not at all. Um, there's, I mean, when at least the one time that I did go, uh, it was the year that Swift UI was announced, and so everyone was asking Swift UI questions. But it was so new that like no one really got like anywhere useful except for maybe Paul Hudson because he's crazy. Um, so yeah, having them the the kind of sessions where you can talk to developers spaced out from the actual dub dub uh, sort of week is actually I think kind of a nice way to do it. So, mm -hmm. um, thought yeah. a different way. If if you do want to prepare for WWDC, start making questions now. Like write them down yeah. in a notes document, um, and then once the sessions open up, uh, you can go ahead and reserve time with individual teams that may or may not know the answer to a question. File radars ahead so you have a number. Uh, list that number. They will actually look at it. This is the one time that you're guaranteed someone's going to look at it uh, before <laughs> talking with you. Uh, so now's that time to make use of that. Um, so uh, definitely encourage that uh, as you prep for this time to come. Like it's coming fast. Uh, yeah. June is right around the corner. Um, you're probably going to spend all of May playing uh, Zelda. So like. June is going to be right there and you're going to have no questions and you're going to panic last moment uh, <laughs> and then like ask some uh, uh, some uh, Sw Swift UI one questions and they're like, we're on Swift UI seven, dude. Um, and don't be me is what I'm trying to say. Oh, I see. <laughs> Speaking from experience. All right. So, so future experience. Yeah, uh, right. Oh, um, the requests for it are already closed to like go to that. So. Uh, if you're listening to this, Oops. you've already you've already missed it. <laughs> um, so that's a bummer. So, yeah, uh, it'll be exciting. I, d I don't really honestly have very <clears throat> many predictions at all. Um, even the the sort of artwork that they have for it is they... it's very clearly new Wi-Fi, right? We get we get rainbow Wi-Fi. Um, it's very wide band, wide band Wi-Fi. Yeah. There are six um, of them, so Wi-Fi 6E on everything? I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, oh, damn, that means no Wi-Fi 7. Right. Airport and Extreme then... coming back. The Airport Extreme was actually announced at Dub Dub uh, alongside oh. the Mac Pro trash can. I don't, I don't remember if That's anyone else remembers. Uh, I don't know if an, anyone else remembers that, but yeah, that, that was a, a thing that got announced side by side. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's when we got Wi-Fi... Five, five is that when ac is uh -huh. ac, AC five? yeah ac is five yeah. yes that's when we got the the wi-fi 5 uh airport extremes um so it's not inconceivable to see to see new new um wi-fi stuff at dub dub yeah and i'm just trying to uh, like rack my brain here like what uh, on the hardware side would they announce and i'm like maybe they mac do pro, mac pro mac pro mac pro that's true. A Mac Pro would be nice. I think it's it's time. It's due time. They can ship it in December 31st like they did the yes. last one seven yes. years ago. Exactly. <laughs> How does the Mac Pro always end up like having so many years in between? I don't know. That's so <laughs> true. They're uh, yeah, man. It's weird. They're like stepping on their own feet with how good um performances I think. Like I just read a thing that 
Yeah, but not even like spec bumps. They could have spec bumped that one. That one That's was spec, true. Bump, was spec bumpable, um, and they didn't. Uh, like they had the Mac Studio is step bumpable, and they didn't. Right? What's yeah. going on, Apple? Yeah, so close. <clears throat> yep. So we'll see. It'll be interesting. Yeah. Um, what's very interesting is uh, Twitter's algorithm is sort of leaked, and also they released part of it on uh, GitHub. Uh, okay, so, so he- here's what I think happened. Okay. I think yeah, it yeah. has been leaked for months, like no one noticed because shit show over there. Uh, excuse my language. Um, and uh, they just realized they didn't know how to like take it down because they fired the one person who speaks GitHub. Um, so they're like, I don't know how to speak GitHub. Uh, we're just going to announce th- that <laughs> we're putting it out. <laughs> and then we're going to have a very angry uh, uh, thing that we're going to go about. We're going to find who did it and who downloaded it. Ooh. We're going to get their phone numbers and their IP addresses. Um, and yeah. Yeah. And then publicly, they're... Uh, I don't know if any of that happened, by the way. Don't don't quote me on any Yeah, of yeah. But like... <laughs> It, it, the timing is interesting, right? Like, why would they do this? So they're, um, <clears throat> their sort of, I guess, public uh, announcement of this is, at Twitter 2.0, we believe that we have a responsibility as the town square of the internet to make our platform transparent, but only partially. Uh, so, yeah, kind of kind of interesting. There's some weird things in it. It talks about how it works, that it uses machine learning to sort of uh, go through three stages to figure out, you know, it, this is it, specifically for uh, their what's new tab. So their algorithmic um, showing of tweets as opposed to just like a, a chronological one that everyone likes. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, kind of interesting. Some interesting stuff specifically is there are some like special casing uh, for if the author of the tweet is Elon Musk. If the author is a Republican or the author is a Democrat, there was one other or one. Or power user. Or power that? user. That one's included. Uh, come on, Spencer. Everything is equal I'm here. S- I'm so sorry. You're yes. either a power user, a Democrat, a Republican, or Elon. That's, That's right. It. That's You're right. You're one of four. That's right. Yeah. That's, those are the four personality types. <laughs> the new genders dropped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, and then it has like ranking things like uh, for a given tweet, um, so, like, if I put out a tweet and Dimitri likes it, my tweet gets a 30 times boost. Each retweet gets a 20 times boost. Each reply only one times. Uh, so, like, I guess sort of comparatively, you know, you need 30 replies to get as much uh, algorithmic boost as a like. I don't know. Kind of weird. Uh, Im- <laughs> images and videos are a two times boost. Links are not good unless there's enough engagement. So it's like, okay cool imagine spencer imagine an alternate algorithm where it surfaces up the tweets of people you explicitly follow and maybe the things that they retweet but not the things that they favorite Hmm. too complicated i know why would yeah why would i want to do that i want both obviously if they favorite it it's basically like they tweeted it or retweeted it right like it's the same thing isn't it it's clearly more then, oh, that's right. You're right. <laughs> How it's... wacky is this that like explicit use of the old way of using Twitter is actively worse yeah, than for doing real. it the like liking something is better than a retweet. Yeah, to me a retweet <laughs> is like reason. that's the top thing. Someone else is sharing the same thing. That's nuts, dude. Yeah, mm-hmm. so just like way weird stuff. Um I thought the the things for uh, shadow bounding is also interesting, sort of the cre- or the the indicators, I suppose, that uh, can lead to a shadow ban are blocks. Which, yeah, okay, that makes sense if if ev- everyone is blocking you, sure. Mutes, abuse reports, spam follows, but also the the thing that I thought was interesting was, or sorry, is, is abuse reports. Uh, spam reports and unfollows unfollows were the thing that I was talking about. I think I misspoke. So if a bunch of people unfollow you at once, you could just get shadow banned out of like nowhere, which is you already funny. got shadow. You already exactly. got actively banned because everyone unfollowed you. <laughs> so weird, dude. So yeah, 
Very uh, interesting little tidbits that we have from this Michael Sy article that we've been looking at, or that I've been looking at at least. Um, I, I wonder if if everyone mass unfollows Elon, if that will shadow ban him. That's my thing. Is like I'm sure they've special <laughs> cased it for it's like uh, if the author like not is author is Elon, then ignore shadow ban. You know, like some stupid thing like that has got to be in there just because you know he's a baby. That there is uh, there is a uh, an issue that as of we record was closed one hour ago but opened four days ago uh, that uh, is like it's an issue on the repo itself uh, and it's titled author is Elon um, and the 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 comment is just the problem is his tweets suck stop re- stop recommending them that's that's the <laughs> contents of the description the issue so um, good and. I just want to read out like how many how many like likes and unlikes this thing got. Uh, Five hundred seventy eight thumbs ups. Uh, this is seventeen on, thumbs downs. This, this is, is on GitHub too. Like it's it's not Twitter where you're gonna get a bunch of likes. It's on freaking the repo on GitHub. <laughs> There's a hundred and six like uh, laughs about this. There's twenty nine celebrations. There's threes. Uh uh there's 18 hearts there's 50s launches it launch it and 27 uh side eyes so so good yeah the it's, comments is, under it are is, so good too bro too this much is just it <laughs> concerning interesting how can, how much can i pay to get my tweets promoted like that the, the next person says 44 billion in cash <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, like, I I really struggle to find how anyone regularly used Twitter like this. Um, yeah. And I think I realized just how bananas it is the one time I like <clears throat> opened up the the default app to like check out what polls or or something were. Yeah. Um, and the the first thing it showed me in the 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 for you tab was this very pornographic thing a friend of mine liked that like they clearly oh. didn't intend to share that out but they right. liked it and that was just like now front and center because it's like oh this is your friend and they liked it here you go and i'm like mm, not what i wanted to be seeing twitter thank yeah. you thank you but no thank you <laughs> and that is just that's i don't think people realize i don't you think know? so either because it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you didn't know, likes are very public. Um, yeah. They get they get retweeted automatically in your behalf way more than retweets. And now we have numbers to prove it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I definitely like have seen that as well. I <clears throat> sort of relented and, and used the Twitter app more than anything out of convenience. And because I was used to the interface for like a long time and like fairly recently before i stopped using twitter and switched over to tweetbot so uh it's annoying and you know i just have to turn on like the top or not not the top tweets the uh whatever whatever they call the chronological version and you still get that but that and ads and i didn't really know how bad it was until i moved over to tweetbot and i was like oh yeah this is like how it was when i joined in like 2011 okay cool (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah, well, Twitter Twitter has uh, been actively uh, stabbed and is just kind of, like, dying. It's bleeding. And, yeah, I guess we're all watching from the sidelines. I kind of feel bad. Uh, but the person's still stabbing it. So it's been we're just kind of yeah. keeping our hands away. Yep. So, bummer. Big bummer. Talking of, about things that are not bummers, uh, we actually missed something that uh, got announced uh, last week uh, with iOS 16.4. I guess not iOS, but iPad OS uh, 16.4. And you'll only notice this if you have a brand new iPad uh, yeah. that supports the Apple Pencil 2. Uh, but if you do have a brand new iPad that supports the Apple Pencil 2, and I think specifically the iPad Pros, um, yes, I don't the one think with the anything M2. else. Yeah, the M2 iPad Pro... Uh, with an ancient Apple Pencil too, because those <laughs> haven't been updated, um, and it miraculously still works. I still use mine. Uh, but if you do have that, 
uh, hover support, like you can hover the pencil tip and you'll see where it's going to draw. That got improved with um, some additional information, like the angle you're holding it and the distance um, and all that. So uh, what happens is like things like Node or Procreate will now show you more information about what you're about to just put on the screen. Uh, so instead of just seeing a dot and then seeing a splotch uh, because your pen like had a different angle, uh, then you will more accurately see what you're about to get, um, which is really cool. Yeah, huge, um, I think, improvement for everyone that cares for this kind of thing. Like, it was interesting, they had someone from Apple kind of talking about this, and they said that, of course, they have someone dog fooding and using um, these, like, basically just a bunch of, you know, amateur artists on the team that was working on this to make sure that it was what they wanted. Cause like for me, I use my Apple pencil honestly to draw like maybe once a year, like it's just kind of like on a whim. So like I wouldn't be the right person to, as a developer to decide what are the things that we want for this and what would be the best way to show that hover or whatever. So um, they've got people that, you know, are, are amateur artists and doing it all the time. Uh, something I thought was cool that, kind of aside from this whole hover thing is they the those people on the team like a participate participate in inktober um if you know what that is uh, as a listener so that's super cool like they're kind of in the community and you know good people to kind of get feedback from internally um they also said that it's these additions are available to developers as well to implement in any app of course if it's in like procreate or whatever um, it's just a part of UI pointer interaction and UI gesture, or sorry, UI hover gesture recognizer. So just more information in those two things to be able to know what the tilt and azimuth are. So yeah, yeah, very cool. And, and I think it's, it's kind of understated how popular the iPad is, uh, from the tech, like industry's point of yeah. view, we all kind of look at the iPad <laughs> as a failed device that had so much potential but was held back by software. Um, and I think we still see it that way. Uh, and we're hoping that WWDC kind of changes that uh, year after year, and it surprises us by changing it in ways that we did not ask for. Um, yeah. See, see uh, whatever that thing is called that got revealed last year uh, that I have... I have finally found it in settings, and I chose not to turn it on because settings made me mad. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, ignore ignore settings uh, as much as you can. I guess <laughs> give give the the stage manager thing a try. Oh yeah. Um, but from what I've heard, for people that actively wanted to use the iPad as like a power user thing, it just didn't work out to them, yeah. um, and that's super shame. Um, I still use my iPad for like three things, watching YouTube, reading books, and like doing Zoom calls uh, throughout the day. Yeah. Uh, so that's like my use for an iPad. And it would be nice if I could use Mac OS on it because every time I prep this show, I'm like, oh, this would be perfect. I can I can go ahead and do that. And I'm like, mm, I don't really want to mess with multiple windows. And like, I might lose my Safari tabs, which I really don't want to lose. Yeah. Um, and I just don't want to touch it because it's it feels super fragile. Um, and that's that's a shame uh, because then I like actively get up and find something uh, to do proper work on. And that is not an iPad uh, at the end of the day. So maybe this will change. Um, yeah. Maybe it won't. Uh, it's hard to say. Yeah, on the subject of like us kind of being on the flip side, my sister is very much more artistic than she is. Like oh yeah, technical. I, I was gonna say like uh, we are like super super pessimistic about the iPad, but yeah. artists love yeah. the iPad. The like, iPad has completely replaced any other digital solution. Yeah, my sister was given the choice to get like an iPad with an Apple Pencil or like an M1 MacBook Air. And she, like immediately she chose the iPad and she uses it all the time um, and recently got the, you know, the, the magic keyboard folio thing. So it is basically a laptop for her. But even before that, she, was, she has a, a desktop computer, but she was using her iPad way, way more than uh, just a normal computer. So for her, it's like that's her number one device, which to me is like, OK, uh, that's weird. But I've been using computer, you know. 
I have too many computers, and that's just my thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but side it's, eyes the pile yeah. of Mac Minis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, how many? Yeah. So, but for her, it's very, and it's like it made it way more affordable to get into digital art. Where you had like before the iPad and the Apple Pencil came around, it was like the Wacom Cintiq, or it, it was like you know prohibitively expensive in the thousands of dollars. Uh, or you could just get a Wacom tablet, which was more affordable, but then you still needed a computer. Uh, well, you did for the Cintiq, but it was like a full monitor. Anyway, my point is, iPad is like, it's better than the Cintiqs, and it's its own device, standalone, that's like a freaking insanely thin slab of, of metal. So, yeah, it's interesting from like other people's perspectives that are not developers and technical in sort of mac os ios land that are like oh yeah the ipad's like a perfect thing and we're like we don't like the ipad so yeah yeah it's uh I, I was gonna make a joke about like how mac minis are not counted in quantity they're counted in volume um <laughs> but like i i looked over and there's a there's a, a similarly tall pile of old ipads on the shelf oh. as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's awesome. So we we're, we were just recently like a, as you can see the 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 back got renovated a little bit uh, and we were cleaning the shelf that I have to my right um and the iPads were like in that position for so many years at this point uh that the 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 leather cases they were like Ooh. semi-fused to each yeah. other. Um so that was fun to pry apart uh but bummer yeah uh it's it's cool that they don't work anymore i guess it's a <laughs> sealed battery and all um it's favorite part of electronics yep. nowadays well so it's a thing yeah it's very much a thing this week's episode of code completion is brought to you by hungry hungry that's hungry with three u's is the iphone ipad and apple watch app you turn to when you really want to eat but are blinded by the multitude of choices available to you and your insatiable hunger hungry isn't there to help you discover new restaurants or flavors no it has a much more humble purpose you tell it all about your favorite restaurants and it will deploy its cryptographically advanced random number generator invoked by shaking your phone in frustration to make the decision of what to eat for you Stuck at home in quarantine and sick of ordering pizza? Use Hungry. Did Hungry just suggest pizza again? Don't fret. As options for another cuisine, a cheaper option, something closer, or simply another place are just a button away. Hungry also comes with a collection of fun animated iMessage stickers so you can share your hunger with others. Thanks again to Hungry for sponsoring our show. Search for Hungry, that's H-U-U-U-N-G-R-Y on the App Store today to give it a try. So, Spencer, um... I've got a code completion tip for you. Okay. So you've likely uh, done this in the past with NS Array. You just kind of put stuff in NS Array, right? It can be this object, it can be that object. Every now and then you get like a CG wrecked and you're like, ah, oh, to transform this into a val NS yeah. value. Uh, yeah. I get mad at semicolons. Um, yes. But uh, that has become a little harder in Swift, right? You can have mixed arrays in Swift, and they're just as easy to make, but they're kind of hard to consume because now you have to have a very fragile if statement that, yeah, like if, else if, else if, conforms to protocol, uh, implements method, yada, yada. It's not the greatest experience out of the gate. Um, now, thankfully, uh, Swift arrays are much better than Objective-C arrays in that they are pointers to buffers, um, and then the Swift compiler will give you an easy access to that buffer. So that means you can have structs in your array, um, and you can also have enums. Um, and this is kind of my favorite, one of my favorite uses of enums with associated types is they make great they make a great option to fill an array with. So say you have an array of two different types of uh, things you want, say they're pets, for instance, right? And pets can either be cats, they can be dogs, or maybe they can be turtles and goldfish and yada yada. Uh, but they all have a name and you want to like have that name and potentially other info saved along with it. Um, so you can use an enum for that. So you make your enum, you have uh, case cat, and then in parentheses, you can have a cat object. Uh, 
Mm. You can have case dog in parentheses. You can have a dog object. Case turtle in parentheses, a turtle object, and so on and so forth. Um, and when I say object, it can be a struct class. You you know you know what is possible in Swift. Uh, but the super cool part about this is now you have a homogeneous array that right. just has one type, the enum. Uh, but you, once you have an enum, you can go ahead and switch on switch on whatever like entry you have, um, and you have a fixed amount of subtypes that you expect out of that array. Um, and because they have associated values, you can go ahead and unwrap them and do something useful with the actual cat struct or dog class right. um, or uh, turtle enum. Like it can it can be whatever type you want at that point. Um, so that is like a really, really great way of structuring non-homogeneous data homogeneously. Uh, plus, it behaves really, really well with Codable um, because it essentially mm. just turns into an array of like dictionary entries. Um, so that is uh, a, a, a great way of dealing with uh, arrays with non the same types. Um, and I would recommend if you've ever written array and have any object or any uh in those generics uh you replace those with one of these yeah uh, because it'll be much better i definitely have those kinds of arrays <laughs> uh yeah i've never even thought if about protocol that. um like, yeah this makes that whole whole thing a lot better yeah for sure that's super cool i i never considered that so i'll uh i'll put put that one in the uh the repertoire as always, I want to personally thank everyone for listening in this week. Please be sure to follow us on mastodon.social at Code Completion to know when new episodes go live, and feel free to toot at us if there's ever a topic you'd like for us to dig into. Most importantly, as a small podcast, please be sure to share this with your friends and family who are also interested in any part of the process of app development. It's your support that enables us to continue doing this, and we hope to grow a healthy community around everything we discuss. Once again, I want to give my thanks to Spencer, who is at Spencer C. Curtis. That's S-P-E-N-C-E-R-C-C-U-R-T-I-S for joining me this week. My name, once again, is Dimitri. You can find me at Dimitri Buñol. That's D-I-M-I-T-R-I-B-O-U-N-I-O-L. And we'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye. So astute listeners may have noticed we're running short. Uh, and that's because uh, Nintendo decided to tell Apple to, like, cool it down. Uh, because they're doing something um, and, and Apple is like got you um, yeah. so uh, on Tuesday uh, Nintendo did a thing uh, they they sat down uh, Mr. A. G. Onuma to like I don't think he actually played I think he just narrated I'm that's sure my did. personal yeah. personal thing I think someone else played uh, but uh, someone someone played and he narrated uh, and then someone narrated over him Um Right. Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, and this is the first kind of like real gameplay we see with the HUD and all that. Uh, and immediately uh, the analysis machines uh, yeah. on YouTube have like <laughs> yeah. gone insane uh, to like identify like there's a new lake here um, that wasn't there before. It's like that's not what they wanted to show. They wanted to show the thing. Um, but yeah. Um, what you think? It was really cool. Yeah. I mean. For me, uh, it like answered some questions of like, how do you get to the Sky Islands? And it's like, oh, there are like falling rocks. And then you just reverse time and jump through the... Uh, it was really cool. Um, so it's like, Sheikah Slate's gone, I think completely, or at least the, you know, the powers of the, you know, like the cry or whatever. Cryonis and, and Magnesis. Yeah. And they're replaced with these... I think just Sonai stuff. So there's like that reversing time. There's uh, we we've we saw it in like earlier trailers where you can kind of go up through the bottom of like a cave and you'll appear Ascend. at the top of the mountain. Yeah, uh, he yes, was swimming same. for quite a while. Yes, like through that through that mountainous region. But um, that was cool because it's like it seems it like there's cool. no real limit to that. It's not like oh I can only do it if it's ten feet. It's like yeah let me swim through a freaking mountain, man. Um, I think the coolest thing that like, I don't know, I, was the most hype thing for me was like the, uh, I forget what it's called. Uh, the, the one that you can stick two things together or multiple things together. The so, log club. Yeah. So <laughs> Link has like, a, a 
I think some sort of a spear or, or like a pitchfork or something. And then he puts a stick on the end of it. And it's just this like absolutely massive Sephiroth length uh, <laughs> spear. It's like he's so far away, but he can still fight and stuff. So that was really cool. Um, and then the first taking... thing I thought of for that was that episode of um, uh, Handyman Saito, which it was an excellent anime, by the way. So if you, good. If you have Crunchyroll, go watch that. Yeah. Uh, don't don't be discouraged by the the seemingly non sequitur ness of the first few episodes. It all comes together. Um, but there's like one gag midway where there's this. Uh, old monk with a giant club like absolute <laughs> massive and he's coming to conquer this dungeon but he is thwarted by trees yeah <laughs> he couldn't get through the trees yeah he just got stuck <laughs> yeah and then he gets into the the dungeon and like there's like a 90 degree turn and he can't turn because the stick is like two times as tall as he is so it's he's the good old 17 go. point turn from awesome power <laughs> <laughs> so good dude Oh my gosh. But like along with that you can stick there's like um uh, fans, right? And so he he fashions together a uh a raft from three trees that he cuts down and then puts these fans on it and you hit it and it's got sort of this uh, set amount of um I guess battery power we'll call it and makes it across <clears throat> a lake. Um mm-hmm. so I mean Real cool possibilities, and like you know, we saw uh, previously that he was like driving a car, like big you know, buggy car thing, and so now we kind of know how that works, and seems pretty um, very accessible. Yeah, it's basically it's CAD software without getting in your way, or at least it didn't look like it got in yeah. anyone's way. But um, like, which... yeah, it had like the three axes of rotation and it was really easy to like say, oh, no, I don't want the fan to be blowing up. I want it to be, you know, rotated this way and blowing back on the raft. So, you know, uh, accessible, but also like powerful, I think. And I'm sure people are going to come up with some like absolutely insane <laughs> stuff for speed running. I am so excited. Does it dude. count as a glitch at this point? I know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's just physics. We're yeah. just making use of the physics engine. It, yeah, it was so good. So I think I was like, I was hyped, right? Like it's a Zelda game. Of course I'm hyped for it. But like, this was like, oh, okay. This is a legitimate, like couple steps forward from what we had in Breath of the Wild. And that's exciting because Breath of the Wild was, is easily one of my favorite Zelda games ever. So, um, big excite, big excite. Yeah, so many people are disappointed that like the the mainland of Hyrule looked the same. Um and uh, what do you like, want? It's it's been like ten, 10 years at most. Yeah. Like just imagine you used to live in a place, you move away and you go back. It's the same. What are you expecting? Like it's not going to change overnight. Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't make sense in game for a change overnight and it wouldn't make sense like in I'm in general, it's like they're not concentrating on that anymore. Sure, it, the 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 landscape is the same. You might find different things. There's going to be stuff here and there that's not the same. And you might have an advantage by knowing uh, the dips and the, the climbs of the various little hills. Yeah. But, like, it's going to be different. You'll yeah. you'll find a reason to re-explore it. I'm, I'll, I'm sure of that. Uh, yeah, definitely. They've got to have some equivalent of shrines uh, probably maybe like underground dungeon type things i don't know how undergroundy that's going to be but there's also the sky islands so they've even expanded from there so and like tons of layers of sky islands you yeah. see some close you see some far uh the one that uh he ends up on on his uninterrupted 10 minutes of gameplay uh is like a speed cut to a completely different island um oh, that yeah. they've been like <laughs> showing true. off on like everything we got to see the map uh, which was really cool. There's yeah. like cave entrances on the map. There's little check marks to to say you like did them. That's um, great. It looks like there are these little shrines, which seems to be like those rocks with like the swirly bits um, mm-hmm. that we've been seeing a lot of. Um, I don't know if it's a shrine. I don't know if it's fast travel, but it shows up on the map. Um, yeah. So like it's significant in some way. There are those uh, large towers that we'll still be able to kind of go to. Um, I don't know if it gives you a map. 
Like it might or might not, right? Maybe you just ascend from the bottom of them. You're like, I don't want to yeah. climb this thing. Yeah, maybe. Just elevator your way up. Yeah. But lots, lots and lots to look forward to. I'm super, absolutely stoked um, for whatever it turns out to be. I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Um, mm -hmm. It's, you know, coming off the heels of, um, I just, I was watching a video on, on Elden Ring, side note, um, that it achieved something that only two other games had achieved, which is like, I think it's, it's basically the same as like, the oh i'm i'm gonna forget the acronym for film you know there's like they sweep all four awards or whatever from the emmys the oscar whatever um there are only three games that now that have like this wide range of awards from different places for video games uh one is skyrim one is breath of the wild and now one's elden ring and so if they're improving the formula of breath of the wild i'm sure it's probably going to achieve that same thing and just be you know another masterpiece so that's good. The hype is real. The hype is so real, dude. I'm so excited. It's like it's so close. Uh, I, I know. can't wait. I'm gonna. I just thought while we were talking, I should really <clears throat> ask for like a week off from work because I haven't done <laughs> that yet, and I'm sure that I will be distracted if I do not. So, <laughs> gonna. Like, uh, the bug. The the tests still need to be written one week later, and they still need to be written. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, I, I cleared my build folder again. Let me take one minute yeah. to... Ah, yeah. Mac OS install. Yeah. <laughs> you know how it is. And they're fast nowadays, too. So it's I know. Like, all of a sudden, it's not even slow. <laughs> yeah. So, yep. Oh, man. But uh, uh, if, you, if you don't have a Switch, you should maybe get a Switch. I don't know how much uh, they maybe go Maybe a Zelda-themed Switch. Like yes. those are miraculously not scalps already. That's crazy. I dude. I was amazed. Nintendo finally learned a lesson, um, and maybe they did it by accident because they like made too many of these back when this was supposed to launch, and then it didn't launch, and they're like, "Well, I guess we'll make more." Yeah, the collector's edition is not available. I keep looking, and it's it's not been available uh, anywhere. So that's a bummer. I really want it. Yeah. Gotta get that art book that is totally not leaked all over the internet. I know it's the physical version, man. It's I know, I know, I know. Yeah, and the pins are cool. It's mostly for the art book, though. If anything, I'll just buy the art book on eBay in a few years when it's cheap. I don't know. Oh, talking about the pins, um, I watched an excellent uh, theorist video. Not not leaks, of course. Um, this is just like based on what's available. Yeah. Uh, but they were looking at the discrepancy between uh, the reverse, uh, the time reversal power, which has like a little circular kind of layout. And then the other three, which are more iconographic, like you have the hand, you have the ascend. Yeah. Um, and what's the last one? You have the, the sword with the tip. Um, and those do look very different stylistically. One has like a yellow glow. The other three have like a green glow. Um, and they made the association with Breath of the Wild's power system where you get your four kind of runes yeah. um, early on. Um, and then later on, you get the four champion abilities. And those are like a very different class Ooh. of like abilities. Um, and they were wondering, well, we actually have seen one more of those iconographic ones when Link lands on that little like uh, glider. There oh, are yeah. two feet that look like the hand. So that might be a power that you can like call that little glider over while you're free falling. That might be part of that like group of powers. Um, and then the other group of powers is likely more related to the pins that come in the collector's edition. Because they actually show a few more of these. On the back of the Switch, there's one of them. On the pin, the pin oh. that they do show, there's one of them. Um, and then uh, they identify, like, a sliver of, like, one more um, that they go ahead and hypothesize because they know Japanese. And they're like, well, it could be this one. Uh, right. It, like, matches up if you use that same kind of uh, script. Um, and they, like piece together three other abilities that we may or may not see of course because it's all hypothesis yeah. um but that was like a very 
uh, a very well researched and well put together video, and I'll I'll try to find it to link cool. it in the show notes. But yeah, that'd be cool. like, I don't know how people like find out these details. It's crazy. But like, people have been making documentaries on Zonai, and Zonai appears like once in Breath of the Wild in the corner <laughs> of the screen when you get to the Zonai ruins, and they people have made made history yeah. uh, with regard to like how many hours of youtube content are available yeah. on the zonai and every zelda youtuber freaked out the moment the soldier construct was defeated and there's like a zonai charge and they're like oh, zonai uh and then agn was like <laughs> moving on <laughs> like that's the least important part from oh, his man. point of view <laughs> so funny yeah the theory crafting is just insane but uh, i mean whatever you know whatever floats your boat and keeps you interested in in it and you know, it's fun. I've talked about this with Elden Ring too. It's fun to like, even when the game is released, go into the history and you know, like what happened uh, in the past in Breath of the Wild, and you know, there was that prequel game as well and stuff. And then there was more, you know, information about what happened, why, why did things happen the way that it did, or whatever. So it's fun to get it, get like even more immersed into the worlds, I guess, because people are yeah. like so passionate about that kind of stuff even if it is maybe not true or whatever they're just theory crafting so yeah and at the end of the day it's all about having fun right yeah. um and there's no there's no right or wrong uh with regard to like which theories are real or not because at the end of the day uh the, the story behind zelda is like really thin <laughs> at best like yeah. it's not a super complicated story anyone could understand it in a in a jiffy uh, and just ignore the timeline. The timeline is not a thing. The timeline does <laughs> not haunt your nightmares. Um, it's not. It's not real. Um, oh. And it's a source of a lot of a lot of speculation. Beca- yep. Likely because the developers at Nintendo uh, want just want to make fun games. And if it means telling the timeline to go to the corner and not look, uh, they will go ahead and tell the timeline to go to the corner and not look. Yep. Um, because at the end of the day, it's just. If you want to make a fun game, sometimes you have to tell your own lore to to move along. Um, and of course, people will invent lore to bring it back together. So yeah. at the end of the day, it works itself out. Yeah, um, make the game play fun. That's that's kind of the biggest thing. Yeah, and it seems like as far as an open world uh, game, this is evolving into an open world sandbox uh, where you're just able to have fun. If you can think that there's something you would want to try, give it a try. It's likely possible. Like even in just Breath of the Wild, that yeah. Was oh yeah, dude. Like just like oh, I wonder if I can. Uh, I was I'm watching someone. He's like, I wonder if I can just parasail through the 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 fins of a windmill. And he does it, and he's like ecstatic about that. It's like the best exactly. thing ever that he experiences in that moment because like. It's not something you can do in real life, but it's totally something that Breath of the Wild just allows you to do, at which other games are like, oh, no, you cannot cross this little uh, wooden fence because it's an arbitrary border in the game because <laughs> yeah. game development is hard. Yeah. And Nintendo's like, hold my beer. Um, and like just completely just like broke all expectations when Breath of the Wild came out. And I feel like games like minecraft where you have to have a crafting table and remember some recipe are gonna feel stupid yeah after after breath after tears of the kingdom comes out because it's it's really just breaking those expectations uh completely yeah it's exciting yeah i wonder how they're gonna change food recipes because that is still stupid yeah um, <laughs> well and I, one other thing that they showed was like using monster parts to like the only thing you could do was the like meat make arrow. Yeah. Like <laughs> put a keys eye on it and it becomes this tracking arrow and it, it like I think you won't have like a super full inventory of just like these like things that you'll only use if you want to make a potion or something. So that's super cool. I'm sure they've sort of refined that and uh, balanced it a little bit to actually have you use things uh, a little bit more. So that's I think exciting to me watch you finally get to that point where you're ready to use your diamond arrow and you miss yeah exactly <laughs> yeah i don't know man we'll see uh good stuff yep anyways see you next week everyone bye